In today's fast-paced development environment, maintaining robust security practices while striving for rapid release cycles can be a daunting challenge. Enter Fortify Aviator, your new AI-powered ally in the realm of static application security testing. Fortify Aviator is designed to revolutionize the way developers handle code security issues, offering intelligent code fix suggestions and seamless integration into existing workflows. Let's take a look at a demo to see how Fortify Aviator is a game changer for software development teams. Hello and welcome to this demo of Fortify Aviator 24.3. So here you see there are seven issues in the scan without Aviator. We can have a look at them here. Let's look at all categories at the same time. You see there are in total these seven issues. One is a duplicate, so we have that privacy violation here twice on the same line. That's um, just because it has been detected in two different ways. So materially speaking, we have six issues. Uh, let's look at them one by one. Now starting from the top, mass assignment insecure binary configuration. So mass assignment uh, is a security risk that um, takes place when a certain class is directly bound by a web framework to JSON inputs. And then in addition to the fields that are intended to be set by the user, there could be other fields that they shouldn't be setting. And the developer may not be aware of that and that may allow a user to do things they aren't supposed to do. Now here we see that this class logging credentials is being mapped to the request body by in this case, the spring uh, framework. But if we look in that class, we see that it only has username password, which is exactly what you would expect from any login method. So this is clearly not an issue. It would have been an issue if we would have had something here like uh, Boolean is administrator, because then as part of logging in, maybe someone could implicitly make themselves administrator or when it would have roles. But we see nothing of that kind. Here, it's just what you would expect, and this is not an issue. So what you would do here um, in the regular case is change this field. So you're in this field, it now says pending review. That's what uh, always uh, uh, the state is initialized to after a regular static uh, scan. Just means that uh, a user still needs to review all of these things. Here they can choose whether something is remediation required or something else that would uh, force it to stay an issue, or you can say risk accepted or not an issue, and then it will become suppressed. So in this case, you would say not an issue. And then here in the comment field, you can also explain why it's not an issue, but that would all be uh, the user's own work uh, in the traditional for on demand approach. Let's look at some more cases. So the second one, open redirect. Um, what you would see here is that this open redirect actually has a data flow that goes through this validation routine. So Fortify has seen that the data flows through this routine, but it didn't appreciate that this is actually a very strong validation method that will only allow the URL to continue if it's exactly equal to one of those two. So therefore there's absolutely no open redirect, but this is something that's beyond the capabilities of the Fortify algorithm to understand. So this would also be not an issue. Uh, then we go to a hard-coded password uh, here on line 22. It says uh, static string password, so that's a field of the home controller class, equals please provide a password. Now to a human, it's very easy to see that this is not actually a hard-coded password. This is a password prompt, a message to be sent to the user to enter his password. But what a static analysis algorithm like Fortify sees is that there is a field called password and it gets initialized using a string literal. That is structurally speaking, the pattern of a hard-coded password. So therefore it's flagging that. Uh, this type of case is very common. It's a massive uh, cause of false positives in Fortify. And it's something that our users right now have to review manually, which is a lot of work. Um, here on line 41, we see another hard-coded password, but this one is in fact correct. So here it's complaining about secret password here. Um, but it's making a database connection using the JDBC uh, database uh, connectivity API, uh, which takes three parameters, the URL, the username, and the password. And here, obviously, all three parameters are hard-coded. For the first two, that is, uh, you, 
could say ugly, bad practice, but not not problematic from a security point of view. Uh, the hard coded password here definitely is a really bad thing. Um, so that's a true positive. Going to the privacy violation. This is about printing the user's password here after logging in. Obviously, a very bad thing. So again, a true positive. And then finally, there's the, the SQL injection. Uh, so here, uh, the user data is being used to create a SQL statement. The SQL statement is created by concatenating some fixed parts with um, the username and the password entered by the user. And this is a very classic case of SQL injection uh, vulnerability. So here, the username or the password could be chosen by the user to contain a single quote. And then after that, you would be in the direct SQL syntax context, so you cannot execute arbitrary statements. Um, let's look at a recommendation here um, as well, so you can see um, what regular traditional four to four recommendations look like. So in this case, it's uh, recommending that you change this to a parameterized statement. And by itself, that's excellent advice. That's what you should do. That's the safest way to prevent this vulnerability. But uh, the code example here is can't, so it's it's a fixed thing. Uh, it's for a different case here where we have an item name and an owner. So this is not something that you can copy paste. It's just something that the developer would need to think about, think about how that would apply to their own code, and then manually make that change, which is also a lot of work and a bottleneck in many AppSec uh, programs. Uh, so that's all without Aviator. Now let's look at the scan with Aviator and how it changes the way you would deal with these results. If we run with Aviator, uh, then some issues are suppressed. And in Fortify on Demand, I can choose whether or not I want to see those. Uh, so if I don't see the suppressed issues, which is the default setting, uh, you see that there are now only four issues left. So three issues have been suppressed and normally you wouldn't see them at all. Uh, but we want to be really transparent with Aviator and offer users the opportunity to review what Aviator has done. Therefore, issues that Aviator believes not to be an issue are still there. They're not uh, completely hidden from the results. And you can just view them by looking at the suppressed issues, and then we get all these seven issues back again. Uh, let's have a look at them. I'm going to take the same view. Let's expand them all. Um, the first one was the mass assignment uh, issue. You see that the auditor status now has been set. This has been set to not an issue, so it's no longer at that default. Fortify Aviator has made a choice. It has also added a comment. You can view the comments in the FOD interface through the history tab here. So you see here there is a comment by Fortify Aviator, and it says the vulnerability is a false positive. Logging credentials is a simple data transfer object uh, used to bind username and password. There's nothing happening here that is a risk. Uh, so this is a very good analysis. So you see that Fortify Aviator di didn't just set the tag, that it didn't just set the auditor status. It also provided uh, a justification of why it did so. And that also makes it easier to review that and see whether or not you agree with Fortify Aviator because it tells you what it has been thinking. Uh, if we continue with the open redirect one, if you remember, that was the one that was not an issue because it went through validation routine. Uh, and that's exactly what Fortify Aviator believes as well. This is not an issue. Uh, the code performs validation and the validate redirect method checks if the URL is one of those two allowed values. So it has understood the working of that validate redirect method and based on that concluded that this is not an issue. Continuing with the hard-coded passwords, remember we had two cases. One was the classic false positive, where it was actually a prompt, and the other one was a true positive. Here on line 22, it's not an issue. It says, it is simply a string constant used as a human readable label or message. This does not pose a security risk. The analysis is spot on. That's exactly what's the case. Now let's see how it behaves on issues that we consider to be true positives. So this is the one where we had that hard-coded password to create the database connection. That is remediation required. That cannot remain like that. And uh, the important thing to do is that this hard-coded password gets removed and obtained in a secure way from some location. 
Now, this is a really nice illustration uh, of why full autorenovation is actually really difficult and this form of remediation assistance where we provide uh, advice in the comments makes a lot of sense. In this case, we know that the hard-coded password shouldn't be there, but we cannot determine for the developer how it should be obtained then as an alternative. There are many ways of doing that. Uh, different ways are appropriate in different situations. Uh, for instance, getting it from an environment variable, generally speaking, is a bad thing uh, because then you would, uh, the environment variables are often not private. Uh, but if you run in a containerized application, that may actually be a very nice way to set it because that's also uh, how you can, um, uh, you can configure them in a safe way for, uh, through Kubernetes from a secret, for instance. Uh, but there are a thousand more ways in which you could do it. Simply a, a decision that we cannot make for the developer. We can only say you need to get it from a secure location. So this is great advice. Looking at the privacy violation, where we were logging the password by system out print line, uh, it simply says remove that, right? Comment it out, don't do that. Uh, of course, that is remediation required. Uh, and then finally, there is the SQL injection. SQL injection, of course, is also remediation required. And here, instead of the generic advice provided by Fortify out of the box, we now get code that we could copy paste. So here you see a prepared statement for this specific situation. So I can copy paste that and that would solve my issue. So you see that in all of the six issues that we reviewed, the Fortify Aviator advice was spot on. This concludes the demo of Fortify Aviator 24.3. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Fortify Aviator is set to transform the landscape of application security by making it more accessible, efficient, and developer-friendly. By shredding the security backlog, boosting development productivity, and reducing friction, Fortify Aviator empowers development teams to release secure software faster and with greater confidence. Embrace the future of SAST auditing with Fortify Aviator and let AI be your guide in the quest for secure code. Stay tuned for more updates and features as we continue to enhance Fortify Aviator to meet the evolving needs of the software development community.